I would like to ask you, Professor, what do you have to say to someone, to someone who has met the risen and living Lord Jesus Christ, who has walked with God for over 50 years, <coughs> who received anointing of the Holy, Sp the Holy Spirit with the same consequences as the early apostles in the book of Acts. Sir, what do you have to say? Because I assure you for my life, it has been no delusion. If you had been born in India, I dare say you would be saying the same thing about Lord Krishna and Lord Shiva. If you had been born in Afghanistan, I dare say you would be saying the same thing about Allah. If you had been born in Viking Norway, you would be saying the same thing about Wotan. If you had been born in Olympian Greece, you would be saying the same thing about uh, Zeus and Apollo. The human mind is extremely susceptible to hallucination. <clears throat> Sir, I'm being allowed by the friend I used to work with to come back. I cannot afford to build my life on hallucination, but on Jesus Christ who is the rock. And it is that I have asked you to address, please. You are obviously sincere, uh, but obviously I do not share your beliefs, and I think you are hallucinating. That's all I can say. I don't doubt your sincerity. Okay. Um, my question is more about AI. I watched a uh, TED Talk with Sam Harris, and I know you've been into computers for several years as well. Um, do you think we will ever achieve AI? And if so, would that AI ever become religious? <laughs> it's, an, it's an interesting question. I'm not quite sure why, why it gets a laugh. Did, did... AI meaning artificial intelligence? Yes. yes. Why is that funny? <laughs> if I had to guess, I, I think they're anticipating an entertaining answer <laughs> on whether or not AI would become religious. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, um, I think it's a fascinating topic, um, scientifically, philosophically, actually. Um, the, the question of consciousness is um, uh, deeply, deeply mysterious, and it may well be solved by AI research eventually. So I think that's very interesting. Um, I, I now understand why there was laughter. I, I misheard it. I, th I thought I didn't hear the word religious. I thought I, you said pernicious, <laughs> <laughs> um, which in, maybe. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a toss-up as to which one is more dangerous. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, well, it, I th you, you could program it to become anything, I suppose. So you could certainly, you could, you could program a religious robot if you wanted to. Um, some of you may have read Douglas Adams' uh, Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency, where there's a character in it called the Electric Monk, which is a robot... Um, device, a, a machine you buy to do your believing for you. <laughs> In the same way as you buy um, vi video recorders to do your television watching for you. Save you the trouble of watching it yourself. Um, the, elec the electric monk does your believing for you. And the Mark II electric monk is capable of believing things they wouldn't believe in Salt Lake City. <laughs> I suppose you could you could ask a, a sort of philosophically interesting question would would evolving artificial intelligence robots evolve towards religiosity in their own right without being programmed to do so um, and I can't see how that would ever happen Although if they evolved to eventually believe that they had a creator, they'd actually be right. I'm intrigued by the extraordinary luck of um, the, the happenstance that gives rise to each one of us and to uh, really everything in the world. Um, 
I dramatize this by saying, what if a particular dinosaur had sneezed at a particular moment um, and thereby changed whether or not it caught? If it, if it hadn't sneezed, it was just about to eat a little shrew-like animal, which was to be the ancestor of all the mammals. There was such an animal. There was one individual shrew-like mammal, which was the ancestor of all modern mammals. This dinosaur was about to eat it when it sneezed, and so the little shrew-like animal got, a, got away. So the, not only our lives, but the, 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 but the existence of all the mammals hangs on that sneeze. Now, of course, I don't know that that particular story is true, but I'm absolutely sure that some similar story is true. Not just one such story, but many, many stories. Um, all of us owe our existence to the happenstance of one particular sperm hitting one particular egg at a particular day. Not only in our parents' generation, our grandparents' generation, our great-grandparents' generation. Um, Aldous Huxley said, a million million spermatozoa, all of them alive, out of their cataclysm but one poor Noah dare hope to survive. And of that billion minus one might have chanced to be Shakespeare, another Newton, a new Dunn, but the one was me. <laughs> Shame to have ousted your betters thus, taking ark while the others remained outside. Better for all of us, Froat homunculus, if you'd quietly died. There, there are, I mean, uh, uh, we get lots and lots of such things. It's very, very heartening, the number of people who come up in, in, when I'm signing books, for, for example. Time after time after time, they say they've changed their minds. It's very, very encouraging. One more encouraging thing, let me tell you. Um, there is no legal Arabic translation of The God Delusion. Um, but there is a, an illicit, illegal Arabic translation of The God Delusion, which can be downloaded as a PDF. And it has been downloaded 10 million times. <laughs> one, and one, one third of that, uh, 3 million or so, has been downloaded in Saudi Arabia. Any guess on when the president won't be obligated to end major speeches with, and God bless the United States of America? <laughs> I suspect that President Obama is an atheist. <laughs> the, the, the interesting question, and, and, and I wouldn't be surprised if, if Presidents Clinton and Kennedy were as well. Um, it wouldn't, uh, but the, 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 the interesting question then is when will they dare to say so? When will a president dare to say so? And my suspicion is that there may be a certain amount of emperor's new clothes going on here. And it's, it's a sort of, it's widely believed that you cannot get elected in the United States unless you say in God we trust, whatever it is, that God bless America. Um, maybe it's just not true. I mean, maybe, maybe nobody's tried it. Uh, and... Um, uh, maybe we should all be, not we, I can't speak for you, maybe you should all be writing to your congressman saying, um, you don't just have to suck up to the Catholic lobby and the this lobby and the that lobby and so on. What about the atheist lobby? We exist. We're actually quite numerous. Um, so don't take us for granted. And maybe that'll come soon. But the question that I had was, in your experience, um, which God and subsequent argument have you encountered that you find the most challenging to refute? I think literally none. <laughs> um. Until they get to that age, it's the parents' responsibility. And, and do you teach them that you may not share to that. be punished? You may not share that.
but that is my religion that is the way I have been brought up and I have I bring that child into this world I educate him I give him everything it's my right to make sure that I bring him and I, I take issue with that you think that it's wicked well that's your point of view I know that's going to make him a better human being and what's missing is when you talk about faith you don't look at what faith teaches first and foremost what faith teaches is that listen you're a human being, so respect your fellow human beings. And I think that's an important point that you don't want to discuss. What is the penalty for apostasy? And that is the thing apostasy? that you fail to discuss, and that's why you've got those prejudicial views about faith. What respect. is the penalty for apostasy? What do you teach the children will happen to them if they give up the Muslim faith? Well, let's bring Can the I... debate back into Britain. What is the and penalty for apostasy? What, what is the penalty for apostasy? What is the penalty for leaving the Muslim faith? Um, to be honest, I cannot back that point up. Dr. Mukadam, what is the penalty for apostasy? And, well, um, before uh, we keep well, coming down this apostasy, well, well, give, well, give, well, well, give, give, give us a quick answer if, if, if on was, what is the penalty for apostasy. Islamic country, country, you Sorry? very well know, if it's an Islamic country, then the Sharia is very clear. Apostasy, apostasy is dealt with the death penalty. Thank you, that's all I want to hear. Here we have a God who wanted to forgive mankind its sins, including, by the way, the sin of Adam, who he presumably knew perfectly well never existed. Nevertheless, he wanted to forgive mankind's sins. Why didn't he just forgive them? Why was it necessary to have a human sacrifice, to have his son tortured and executed in order that the sins of mankind should be absolved? Is that not the most disgusting <laughs> idea you ever heard? U universities need to, to rediscover what universities are all about, which is f a forum for discussion, civil discussion, civilized discussion uh, of in intellectual issues, and not to become, well, I, mean, I think the, the most distressing examples of, of, of what's going wrong is the university where I first taught, uh, University of California at Berkeley, the home of the free speech movement which in recent times has been also the home of disinviting people because there's a fear that they might offend somebody. Well, you go to university in order to be exposed to things that might offend you. That's what you're there for. You're not there to be... So I think universities should, should revert to what universities are for and to hell with safe spaces and Play-Doh. And... <laughs> Grow up, in other words. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. You can find good quotations in the Bible to support the point of view that you want to, uh, to, ad to adopt. And of course you can find the exact opposite. So why not bypass the Bible altogether as a, as a source of uh, Moral authority mm -hmm. and simply say, as Shakespeare said, as Milton said, as anybody you like, you quote anybody in literature you like, and as Isaiah said or as Jesus said, you can get quotations from literature all over the place to bolster the point of view that you want to make. That's what Martin Luther King did and many other people have done from the Bible.